What kind of tip would I use to spray an oil-based stain? So oil-based stains are, first off, they're very thin. So um, you're more than likely not gonna have, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about orifices again, big orifices. So like a, a five cent <laughs> tip. <laughs> Why well, you make a weird face? <laughs> so I'm uh, talking about big orifices. <laughs> so a five seventeen dip is just going to have a big hole, like a big center hole. So it's just going to put out more products. The thinner the product, the, the smaller the orifice size you should have. So um, if I was spraying an oil based product, say on a fence, I'm, I'm not going to want a narrow pattern like a three ten because it's going to take me forever. I'm going to want a small orifice because it's thin but a wider pattern, so like a 510 probably? Yeah, I'd probably, I, this is again where like an HEA I think is also a good idea because the droplet size is bigger, so it's less, especially with an oil product, it's not gonna float away quite as much. So you want a small tip, it depends on the application. A small tip is good because you can control it, but it's gonna atomize it more, which means you may risk potentially on a breezy day losing some product versus like maybe an HEA, you're gonna have a bigger tip, but it's gonna be bigger droplets. Um, <clears throat> either way, the whole goal is just to get product up. Usually you're going to end up back brushing that oil-based product in anyways, and so it's just, it's a paint tip. My recommendation is never use oil-based paints anymore. Um, it helps. Can you talk about the rubber? No! <laughs> can you talk about the rubber slash metal washer inside the nozzle that cradles the tip? I have one nozzle and where this washer just falls out. Other nozzles seem to hold it in firm. Are they a universal size? So you have, I, I know this, you have Titan guards and you have Graco guards and we'll just kind of do the comparison. I know the Graco guards, um, until you've screwed it in and use it a couple times, it kind of maybe some pain or something. I mean, it kind of like seats in there. When it's brand new, that little seat, if you unscrew it brand new, it falls out. The Graco, that little seat has a tendency to stay in there, like kind of like snap in and it stays in, it never falls out. And I think that the same, the Graco tips, when you turn them, they actually, or unturn them, unlock them, they have a lock and a non-lock, so the tip actually won't fall out if it's not um, screwed onto a gun. And um, Yeah, generally just use the right manufacturer's stuff with the same guard and that's right. going to help you a lot of the way. But yeah, it's going to fall out until you tighten it on there. Sometimes it does anyway, and it's just, it's one in a hundred tips maybe. You have yeah. Yeah. like that. Uh, I just got a Graco sprayer, not commercial. If I use a Titan HEA tip, Will I still benefit from the better overspray control? Yes. Do you guys have any thoughts on the clean shot attachment from Graco? I was hoping they'd just leave it at, do you have any thoughts? We typically use them if we are spraying gutters with lots of extensions, like on an exterior, because then we don't have to worry about it spitting on the, on the gutter if we have to stop <coughs> midway through a spray pattern. Yeah, so the, lo the longer the extension, the larger the spit's going to be. And if spits are a concern of yours, throw a clean shot on the end, and they do work um, magic by eliminating spits. Now, the drawback to them is they are extremely heavy, so it adds a lot of heavy weight on the end of the extension, and, um, and that can get a little bit tiring. But um, it's a great little device, and it works well. Uh, what are the best spray rigs, tips, and PSI for silicone-based paint products? It really depends on the application and the product. You're probably going to want to lean towards a larger rig, something that can push something that's got some viscosity to it. And again, like the tip and, and stuff is going to depend on where and what you're spraying. If you're spraying like a roofing coating and it's a big commercial building or, you know, probably don't want to be on that roof all day, so you're going to want to get a bit bigger of a tip, but it, it's all conditions. Um, but I'd lean towards, what, a 11, yeah. 40, 10, 40, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, so I think you touched on, you, you um, said viscosity. So, I mean, whether it's silicone based or not, I mean, the viscosity determines, you know, what tip size, what pump size you're going to need. So, I mean, a silicone based coating may have the viscosity or the consistency of like an exterior paint like duration and it doesn't change anything or that silicone base um, coating could have the viscosity of say like a block filler and that's going to change everything. Bigger tip, bigger orifice, bigger pump. Yeah, check the data sheet, see what the recommendations are. It's always a good place to start and then adjust from there. This person is essentially asking, 
essentially. Essentially, paraphrased. Don't mince words. Essentially. Uh, like, what's the relationship between the quality of your sprayer and the amount of fingering you get? Um, the larger the pump, the more a sprayer is going to be able to keep up with a tip size over a duration of time. I mean, if you take, um, say, like a pump, a do-it-yourself pump from Home Depot or Lowe's, you know, the, the pump isn't designed to spray, you know, thick coatings. It's designed to spray your average paints, and it's the pressures. The pressure is probably going to drop significantly on a pump like that. That's not built to push you know, certain types of products and you're going to more likely run into fingering and stuff using, you know, an inexpensive pump like that. But if you're, I mean, if we're talking professional lines from say like a Titan 440 to a Titan 11, 1140, I don't think there's going to be, you know, a whole lot of difference there except the 440 is not designed to spray block filler. It's going to depend how much you use the pump, how long you're pulling that trigger, things like obviously you let off the trigger, let the pump keep up, then, then great, not a problem. But the amount of times a 440 is going to have to run versus the amount of times an 1140 is going to have to run, like in that fluid section, it's just less wear on the pump. So it, it really just depends how much you're painting and where you're ready to invest in. Yeah. If it I, makes sense to invest in a bigger pump, that's kind of the reason that they make them. Yeah. I think you're gonna you, now you're gonna you start getting into some real technical things about pumps like these really inexpensive pumps. You know, will have what you call dead banding and hourglassing, where as they're pumping, the pressure is gonna rise and fall at the gun, which is more likely to cause you know um, cause fingering and in. in um, you know, spray patterns that are inconsistent. And so the better quality pumps, bigger pumps are less likely to have stuff like that, so. Is the Graco 395 PC Pro with a contractor PC gun a good gun for beginners? Sure. Do you guys know if all Titan pumps are made in China? So the Titan pumps, so I had the opportunity to actually go tour the Titan factory and I saw the Titan pumps and I videoed what they would let me video, them being um, assembled right there in, on the factory. So I think with um, you know some of the other manufacturers too, parts are manufactured in China, but the pumps are assembled in the USA. So, but don't quote me on that, because I, I saw them being um, assembled right there. It's pretty cool, so. Made in the USA with globally sourced parts. I think that's a, a standard standard um, way to put it with, you know, the pump manufacturers and stuff, so. This person's a bit concerned about the safety of hose whips, since they can't handle as much pressure. You can't handle the pressure. So every hose whip I've ever seen, it has um, the pressure that's higher than the actual pump itself, so I'm not sure. Some are rated at 3,200 PSI, some are rated at 4,000, some are rated at 5,700, and up from there. So, yeah, I obviously, the... don't be a moron and make sure you run under that guideline. Yeah, so I, I, I think the, the hose whips that we, um, our custom-made hose whips that we send out, um, the lime green ones, they're rated at 5,075 PSI, and your pumps are typically rated at I believe 3,000 or 31, 3,200 PSI. Most consumer or contractor grade electric spray rigs are 3,000 PSI or less. Yeah, so, Maybe 3,200. Yeah. But, but if you do have a hose whip that is rated less than your pump, that obviously can be an issue and yeah. you probably shouldn't be using them together. Oh, this person got overspray on porous brick due to a lack of better masking. Any suggestions on removing it? If I can remember what we did, I would tell you. So Laurel had it and we yeah, used... Yeah, so that was vinegar for... Oh, that's right. Uh, like spray cans. It was vinegar. Like oil-based... Uh... And it actually worked. Yeah. Vinegar. It was a white vinegar we used. Now, if you're talking like a latex-based thing and you got overspray all over it, you're probably looking at... Um, you know, using ammonia or goof off or something like that to try to remove the coating from the brick and a wire brush trying to get in there. Um, but it depends how porous the brick is and... Yeah, be careful too, like um, wire brush, you know, it's because sometimes some of the chemicals, the wire brush will start to stain the brick gray. So if that was the case, you can use a nylon brush, you know, and just 
what you start ended up running into, unfortunately, is you start to clean the brick really good. So then it's not clean and you start to see a difference where you scrubbed and clean versus not cleaned. And, you know, just don't get overspray on the brick and then you won't have that problem. Try to remedy the, you gotta try to fix it right away. If you, if you see that it happened, you should be pulling the masking, which I'm guessing wasn't the case here. <laughs> You should, you know, whatever, move the masking away and try to clean it while it's all wet. You're more likely to um, irrigate that brick and get water under there and get as much of that paint out as possible versus if you let it dry, then you're, you're going to have a harder time fixing that problem. So is that like irrigate the brick like you would irrigate your ears? Dude, did I tell you about that? You did, and that did yeah, not stop. It was nasty. <laughs> if you haven't had your ears irrigated, you might want to have them irrigated if, you know, you can't hear so well. Can't hear so well. Hey, I'm Noah, and I edited this video, and I decided to edit out Chris and John talking about earwax for much longer than they should have. If you really wanted to see that, you have my deepest apologies. If you have any more questions, <coughs> if you have any more questions about airless sprayers, make sure you leave your questions down in the comment section below. Subscribe so you don't miss any more Q and A's, and we'll see you next time.